hundred. That is really amazing. Um, okay, let's start. Before we start, um, I would like to remind you uh, this event is recorded, uh, including the chat. The recorded session will be posted at IFLA Journal Editorial Committee at How to Get Published Scholarly Journals Asia for 30 days after the webinar at this particular link. Microphones will be muted for this event. And if you have any questions, comments, please type in to the chat or Q&A box. Um, I, I would also like to remind you the talk is GDPR compliant. And there are IFLA and the Zoom privacy policies you can find here. If you have any questions about um, privacy, you can email to professional support at ifla.org. Right. My name is Li Hongzhu. I'm from uh, Wuhan University, of China. I'm the moderator today. And the presenter today, we have a very good team uh, Professor Steve, uh, Stephen Witt from University of Illinois at Urbana Champaign. Uh, Professor Long Xiao from Peking University and Shanxi University, China. And Professor Diljit Singh from the University of Malaya, Malaysia. Uh, without, um, so the content today, Stephen will talk about why published, uh, how to choose a journal and um, IFLA journal, he will talk about a little bit about IFLA journal. And Long will talk about her view from the author of IFLA journal and the Dojit will talk about editorial and the peer review processes. Uh, and finally, I will talk about um, author support and resources. Now I'd like to invite Professor Stephen Witt, the editor of the IFLA journal. He's an associate uh, professor um, um, at the um, University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Please, Steve. Ah, thank you so much. Um, and welcome everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure to join you all. Uh, and my apologies uh, for getting the late start, uh, but we will uh, proceed as planned. Um, uh, as uh, as Li Hong said, I'm Steve Wett. I'm the, the editor of IFA Journal. And uh, for me, it's uh, in the evening. So good evening to you all and uh, good morning uh, to friends and colleagues uh, who are joining from Asia. And I imagine we have people from other time zones uh, as well. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking uh, about um, uh, uh, why it's important for uh, library professionals uh, and academics to publish, uh, and then how to choose a, an appropriate journal for your publication, and then also introduce you to if a journal as a as a potential uh, venue for your publication. Uh, the next slide, please. Uh, so uh, many of us uh, have published previously, and, and I, I may be singing to the choir a, a bit, um, but it, it's important to go over uh, why it's important uh, for us to publish uh, and share our professional work, uh, especially uh, as that uh, relates um, uh, to, to the work in, in library and information science. Um, as we're all aware, uh, there's a lot of research happening um, uh, and many of us are engaged in that. Um, but uh, at the same time, as professionals, uh, we all have a unique perspective. Uh, our institutions are each unique, and, and we, we're all coming from different contexts. Uh, so if we don't uh, document our work, uh, share our practices, uh, and analyze that, um, nobody will know about it, and, and we can't learn from one, uh, one another uh, well uh, in that type of situation. Uh, uh, ours is a, a, a very global profession, uh, so we need to learn uh, from each other. Uh, this is why we need to have uh, uh, perspectives in our literature uh, that are local, uh, that are regional, uh, national, uh, and then also international and global uh, in, in perspective so that we have uh, many different cultures and backgrounds uh, represented. 
Uh, for for many of us who are practitioners, and, and I'm uh, I'm a practicing librarian, so I could include myself there. Um, uh, an academic journal provides uh, a, an excellent place uh, to to gain an evidence-based approach uh, to sharing professional knowledge. Um, and it challenges us to think about our work um, a little bit differently. We have to step outside uh, of, of ourselves a bit. We have to think of, about our work uh, as it relates uh, to other uh, social, uh, economic, uh, cultural influences, uh, both locally, uh, regionally, and internationally. Um, and, so it's important for us as practitioners to, to be engaged in this process. Uh, also, uh, our publications are, are very valuable to our employers. Um, uh, they can contribute to promotion. Uh, they can enhance uh, our own knowledge uh, of our work. Um, and of course, those of us who work in, in universities and especially research universities, uh, contributing our work to an international journal um, uh, is important because we're, we're joining uh, the, the market for information, uh, what's become a, a global transfer market, uh, whereby not only our own, our own reputations, but the representation of our universities um, are, are influenced by uh, the publications that, that we make. Um, um, so uh, in the next slide, we'll, we'll learn about choosing a journal um, and uh, discuss uh, once you decide you want to publish your research, um, then we'll work uh, on how to uh, choose your journal. And it looks like some people may be having difficulties with sound. Um, I'll try to speak closer to my microphone. Um, uh, so uh, when you're choosing a journal, um, you have to think about the story that you're telling. Uh, each research article, each publication uh, is really telling the story about how you approach the problem, uh, why that problem is important, um, what methods uh, or techniques you used uh, to analyze or to learn more about the problem, uh, and, and what you learned and discovered through that process and how that is relevant to others. Uh, so you need to think about that conversation. Um, you need to just uh, think uh, with, with yourself uh, and also um, uh, with your, your co-authors, your colleagues about your potential audience. Um, are you publishing with uh, uh, your colleagues locally in mind? Uh, maybe you, you, you're looking for a regional journal uh, if you're if you have a national focus, uh, perhaps a, a, a national journal, maybe from your uh, national association. Um, but if you're if you're trying to to tap into broader trends um, uh, uh, and show how perhaps your your regional local context is important within those trends, uh, then an international journal uh, would be a great uh, choice. Um, you also need to think about things uh, like whether or not the, the journal is open access. Um, uh, this is increasingly important as, as many organizations require that their faculty publish in open, open access journals. Uh, also, uh, consider the, the journal's metrics. Uh, what is its impact factor? Uh, how often uh, do papers get rejected? Um, and how often and how quickly do, do papers get published? Uh, are they cited well by other authors? Uh, so as you're looking for a journal, it's very important to, to read some recent issues uh, and see uh, are there papers in that, in that issue or in recent issues that, that uh, are in the same discussion that you want to join in your conversation with your research? Uh, do they seem relevant to the work that you're doing? Um, uh, are the, the citations that, that you're working with coming from that journal? Um, the chances are uh, a lot of the citations from your own work should come from the journals that you're 
trying to publish in because you're joining those conversations. Uh, and then as you narrow down, um, you should look at the, the guidelines for the authors uh, and really follow those uh, 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 quite exactly. Um, uh, if you have submitted your paper to another journal and perhaps it was rejected, uh, you need to reformat for the next journal. Um, and you need to make sure that you're following the citation style um, and the abstract style uh, of whichever journal you're publishing in. So it's very important uh, to, to do that. Uh, often uh, authors will not, uh, and this contributes to papers being rejected uh, even before the review process. Uh, so check the, the journal page. Uh, if you have questions, uh, email the editor, uh, or you can even email uh, some of the, the colleagues uh, from, from this webinar uh, who are on the editorial board, uh, and we'll be happy to, to answer questions to you about uh, IFLA Journal uh, and how to publish there. Uh, so I can discuss IFLA Journal a bit more. Um, so uh, IFLA is, uh, is the uh, journal for, for the International Federation of Library Associations. So it's our, it's our uh, flagship journal for, for the IFLA organization. Uh, and we, we publish uh, through SAGE publications. Um, and you can find uh, the issues uh, on that uh, website. Uh, and as the journal for IFLA, it, sh it should be no surprise to you then that we are uh, an international journal. Uh, and we, we broadly focus on library information science. Uh, so uh, uh, topics uh, from uh, children's librarianship uh, and literacy uh, to agricultural information and, and rural development uh, to uh, issues uh, of research data management in academic libraries are all relevant uh, for the journal. Um, uh, but we do like to reflect uh, our profession uh, and its pr practices within both local uh, and global contexts. Uh, and this means that we seek uh, research, uh, we seek commentary uh, that attempts to navigate between uh, the, the global uh, and the local to produce research that uh, uh, revolves around traces that suggest relations between these two frames of reference. Uh, and I'm quoting uh, my, my colleagues, uh, Zhuzia Gill and uh, Hilary Kahn uh, in their recent work uh, on, on global studies research. Uh, and, and this is an important factor for IFLA Journal because uh, we represent IFLA, an international organization. Uh, but as we know, IFLA uh, is very concerned with promoting the local context uh, of librarianship and making sure that that is well represented. So, so we need to, to be able to engage uh, the local and the global uh, in our work. Um, uh, so uh, in the next slide, uh, we can discuss a bit more about uh, uh, why you might want to publish in a journal. Um, so as I've mentioned, um, IFLA uh, Journal has a, a global readership. Uh, every member uh, of IFLA uh, uh, receives a, a subscription to IFLA Journal. Uh, so they have uh, digital access to the journal. Uh, and, and we also uh, have a print publication. Uh, so that means it's distributed and available to librarians all around the world. Uh, so you're really reaching uh, a worldwide uh, audience uh, through publishing in IFLA Journal. Um, uh, in addition, uh, we translate each of our abstracts. So uh, when you publish in IFLA Journal, we'll send your abstracts uh, for uh, the high quality professional publications um, uh, or, or translation. Um, so in each of the IFLA languages, uh, so that would include uh, Chinese, uh, Arabic, um, 
uh, German, Spanish, French, um, uh, Russian, um, and uh, and so our colleagues in in other countries uh, who come from other language traditions uh, have have more access to to our work. Uh, in addition, uh, we are a hybrid open access journal. Uh, when once your manuscript is accepted, uh, you can archive it, make it available in uh, your institutional repository without waiting. Uh, there's no embargo. Uh, in addition, uh, when we publish on Sage, uh, the uh, the issue is uh, simultaneously published uh, open access on the IFLA website. So anybody uh, can access IFLA Journal via the IFLA website. Uh, it's a great place to, to look at previous issues uh, of the journal if you can't access uh, through SAGE. Uh, and when you're ready to submit, um, uh, we have uh, four different types of submissions that we have. And on the next slide, uh, we can talk about that. Uh, so the four types of submissions, um, and it's quite typical uh, of, a, of an academic journal, are original articles, uh, review articles, uh, case studies, and essays. Uh, I've provided a brief description of each here. And I think from what I've described of the journal, uh, it should be no surprise to you uh, that we seek uh, in each of these categories uh, work that is uh, not just representative of local perspectives, but also engaging uh, broader global structures that influence the topic. Uh, so within our original articles, uh, which are typically uh, uh, more traditional research publications, um, then uh, you, may, you need to make sure that your design and analysis uh, is reflective of the, the multiple conceptual and, and spatial levels that are relevant to, to our work in library science. Of course, we work for institutions and we often focus on that institutional level, but we all know that the, the work we do uh, uh, is influenced uh, and influences uh, uh, many international topics uh, and uh, other discourses ranging from economics to, to social sciences. Uh, the review articles uh, as well um, uh, make sure need to make sure that they're really examining uh, topics uh, internationally, uh, looking at advances, debates, and trends. Uh, and identifying future directions for research. Uh, and I think uh, in terms of case studies, it, it's very important to remember that a case study is not just uh, a journalistic story uh, of a project that took place in your library or problem that your library is facing. Uh, it should really uh, try to create routes to understanding how the, the phenomena that you are looking at locally uh, uh, is represented at a global level, uh, how it's manufactured, reimagined, adapted locally, uh, even though you may be talking about something that's, that is uh, also happening uh, in, in many other institutions. You need to link those together uh, in your case study and use uh, qualitative case study methodologies in your research. Uh, and finally, the, the essay category uh, is an opportunity uh, to provide more conceptual analysis of policies um, and trends that, that impact and contribute uh, to our information environments. Um, and I think of, of the four of these categories, we, we received the fewest in the essay category. But I think there are many, uh, many policy issues uh, that impact library science that, that are worthy of this topic. And I would encourage submissions in this area as well. Um, so now I can talk about how to submit. Uh, so when you're ready to, to write your article, uh, note that the typical length is usually from three to 8,000 words. Um, and 
Uh, sometimes it exceeds that uh, and rarely is lower than that, though we have been uh, uh, pursuing different types of articles in some of our special issues. Uh, so you may find shorter articles uh, in a special issue, for example, but not often in a, in a regular issue of the journal. Uh, in addition, uh, we, as we, as I mentioned, uh, can publish on a range of research approaches and topics, um, and often uh, cluster uh, topics within special issues. Uh, so you'll have noticed uh, that we've had uh, some recent special issues that have come out. Uh, and this year we'll have special issues on indigenous librarianship, uh, one uh, on COVID-19 um, and another that's being developed on preservation. Uh, and, and we're taking papers right now for an, an issue on intellectual property or intellectual freedom rather. Uh, and if you have ideas for special issues, we would really appreciate hearing from you because uh, we often collaborate with colleagues uh, across IFLA uh, in developing our special issue topics. Um, and finally, uh, uh, we've made some changes to the journal uh, very recently. So uh, the journal issues used to have only five or six articles because we had a limit on the number of pages that we could publish. Uh, SAGE has removed that limitation uh, and they're encouraging us to publish more uh, papers. So. Uh, this means that uh, the time to publication for IFLA Journal should uh, be reduced quite dramatically, uh, making it a great uh, opportunity to publish uh, your work in, in a more timely fashion. Uh, so if you want to submit, uh, please feel free to contact me with questions, uh, and you can go to the, the website listed here uh, to, to begin the submission process. Uh, so thank you very much. We'll have questions. Uh, at the end of the, the each uh, presentation. Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, next, I would like to invite Professor Long Zhao, a professor from Peking University, and she's also the director of Shanxi University Library. She's a very influential li um, library researcher in China, and uh, as well as a very good friend of mine. Uh, welcome, uh, Professor Zhao. Uh, thanks, Dr. Zhou. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, hear yes, my, uh, Okay, okay, good. Uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Zhou, and hello, everyone. It's my pleasure to talk about uh, my own experiences from an uh, author's perspective. Uh, so the first issue is why I chose IFLA Journal uh, to publish my, my paper. I got in touch with uh, IFLA uh, Journal in 2017. At that time, I learned that it is an uh, official journal of uh, IFLA. And that means it is our librarian's own journal. And it is also uh, published by Sage, a uh, very famous uh, publisher. So uh, that means I believe the IFLA Journal. Uh, and then uh, in 2019, uh, I submit a paper to uh, IFLA Journal, and uh, then at last uh, published in 2020. Uh, my uh, article title is uh, uh, Innovative Application of Knowledge Management in Organizational Restructuring of Academic Libraries a case study of Peking University Library. Uh, this article focuses on knowledge management. Uh, it takes Peking University Library, uh, one of the top uh, top-notch academic libraries in China, as a case study to explore how to restructure its organization and uh, resetting its uh, uh, staff position based on the knowledge stream as the core. And then uh, through the academic library transformation to intend to satisfy the knowledge demands of different types of users and create an uh, environment in favor of knowledge flow and uh, innovation. Um, 
I would like to talk uh, why I select and determine the top, uh, this article topic. Uh, actually, uh, uh, I, uh, uh, I uh, think about, I think it over from uh, three, uh, three sides. Uh, first, it focuses on uh, solving a specific problem, not empty theory. And the second, and not only basis on knowledge management theory, but also has practical significance to library organizational management. And third, it also uh, bases on case study and data analysis. Uh, why I, I talk about this? That's because when uh, I we uh, submit paper, we need to uh, think about the topic uh, very seriously. Uh, actually, I partly talk about this topic um, in uh, open session in IFLA conference in 2017. Uh, a lot of uh, um, attendants are very interested uh, in my topic and discussed it with me. So that's why I then I, uh, I wrote a finished uh, paper and then uh, uh, submit to IFLA journal. Okay, uh, next slide please. So uh, and next uh, issue I, I, I'm talking about the submission and the review process. Uh, in the May and 2019, I submit the paper to IFLA journal. And then uh, uh, I got the confirmation and the manuscript ID. In July, I received the first comments and the suggestions by the reviewers, two reviewers. Uh, and then I did, I did the revision and uh, wrote the response and uh, uh, submit the paper again. In October, I received the, the second uh, comments and the suggestions by the uh, reviewers, also two reviews, but uh, different with, uh, with the reviewers last time. And uh, uh, in February in 2020, I got the proof copy and in April, I got the published journal and article. Uh, in this submission and review process, I think we need to pay special attention to uh, comments and uh, suggestions by the reviews, very serious. Uh, so, and you have to uh, revise each issues one by one according to the comments of the reviewers. Uh, I even uh, change the title. Uh, you, uh, strong the the article logical uh, logics and uh, use uh, different color to highlight all the revisions. And then uh, second, and then at last, uh, when you finish, when you completed all the revisions, you have to uh, wrote a letter to reply to the decision letters very carefully and state how to uh, I made the divisions, which uh, divisions I made. So uh, I think uh, I, I uh, actually, I uh, uh, spent a lot of time to, to make the revisions uh, following the uh, comments and suggestions by the reviewers. Next uh, slides, uh, slides, please. Uh, that's my uh, article uh, in uh, IFLA journal. Uh, it's uh, the volume issue and the pages and the URL. Uh, it is uh, open access. So uh, act, everybody can uh, uh, download, can read, can access. Uh, okay, that's all my talk. Thanks. Thanks, Dr. Zhou. Thank you very much, Professor Xiao. Next, I would like to invite Professor Dojit Singh. He's retired Professor of, from University of Malaya, uh, Malaysia. Um, now um, let's invite um, Professor Singh. Thank you, Professor Li Hong. 
Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. Okay, thank you. Because I'm having a little bit of problems with my computer audio. Yeah. Well, uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Uh, it's a pleasure to see you virtually here. Uh, that's a little bit about myself. As uh, Professor Lee Hong said, uh, I have retired from the University of Malaya, uh, but I still keep myself active professionally. Well, uh, let me share with you a little bit about the review process because that's what I've been doing with the Applied Journal for the past uh, two years or so. Basically, what is the review process? It's a form of uh, examination and comments by independent experts in the same field of the article or the manuscript that you have submitted. So what we are trying to do is um, basically to look at the, the manuscript that you have submitted, make some suggestions, make some uh, comments on it, praise you where it is necessary so that it becomes a better article. Next slide, please. Where does the review process fit in? Well, basically, uh, first, as you heard from Professor Xia, uh, you submit the manuscript. The manuscript goes to the editor. <clears throat> the editor has the first look at it and then decides whether it is suitable for review or not. And if it is in his or his view, it is not suitable, then you get a polite letter to say that, you know, sorry, we're not able to accept this. Uh, article, this manuscript, uh, but I believe in most cases, it will be sent for review. <clears throat> so this is where people like me and a team of others in the group uh, receive that article, receive that manuscript. We look at it, we read it, uh, we sort of reflect upon it and see, okay, what are the strengths? What are the weaknesses of it? And uh, in some cases, it may be that there is a further review required, in, in which case it goes back to the editor who then sends it to the uh, author and says, please revise, please make these changes. Once those changes have been made, and sometimes this can take uh, two or maybe even three rounds, once the reviewers look at it and say, okay, this is good, uh, then, you get a letter from the editor saying, congratulations, the article is ready uh, to be accepted and will be in the process of publication. In a few cases, you may get a letter of rejection. <clears throat> and as Steve has pointed out, it's not the end of the world. There are always ways of improving on it. There are always ways of trying somewhere else in there. But that's basically the review process, uh, what it involves in there. Next slide, please. So why do we want to review the, the article? Uh, why do we sort of put in this uh, extra step in there? Basically, like most journals, the IFLA journal is of high quality. And uh, we want to maintain that quality. So the review process is a form of quality control. Basically, it helps to determine if the manuscript meets the standards of the journal. Uh, at some point, uh, Steve may share with you that, you know, where is our journal in terms of the international rankings, but uh, it is a fairly respected journal and we want to keep it that way. We want to make it even better. So we want to make sure that the articles that are published in there have some quality in it in there. Next slide, please. Next slide. So, what is the role of the reviewer? Why do we review the thing? Basically, we wanna see if the work falls within the scope of the journal. Sometimes there are articles that are not quite within the scope of the journal. So we politely tell the author, you know, you might want to try somewhere else. We also want to see if the work has been clearly formulated, carried out and described, you know, what is it that is said in the article? Does it follow the logical steps of uh, preparing an article and so on. Whether the objectives, methodology, findings and conclusions are appropriate for it in there, uh, whether it's linked, whether they sort of flow from one to the other, whether the methodology is appropriate, are the conclusions appropriate and so on. 
We also look at the significance of the work. Is it really something that is of significance to the profession? And especially for an international journal that is very broad in nature, um, who would be interested in it? How will it be of useful to them? And there are times when the uh, human, human subjects are involved, uh, some aspect that needs ethical uh, examination. Uh, have these been considered? And if so, how have they been treated? We also look at the readability of the work. Can the work be understood? There's a flow to it. While we don't go into the specifics of the language, uh, there's a whole team that does it, but we still want to see whether it's understood or not. And then, of course, there's a system to see whether the work has been plagiarized, whether it's taken from somewhere else. Is the, uh, is the manuscript basically similar to something else that has been published? Uh, we also look into those aspects in there. Next slide, please. So basically, as Steve pointed out, uh, it's to help the editor to decide whether a manuscript should be accepted or needs revision. Or in some cases, the editor just have to say, sorry, but this is not suitable for this journal in here. So in this case, it may be rejected. Next slide, please. There are different types of with it. Review the name of the reviewer is hidden from the author. In other words, the reviewer would know who the author is, but the author doesn't know who is the reviewer. In IFLA journal, we practice the double blind review where both the reviewer and author are anonymous. In other words, I don't know whose article it is and the author doesn't know who is it who reviewed that article, which helps to maintain a sense of a neutrality in the sense that I'm not biased in some way. Uh, I may like a particular author, or I may not like a particular author. The element of bias may come in, but with the double blind review, the bias is very, very minimum or none at all. Next slide, please. So in general, what do we look for? We look for the coverage of the article. We look at the content of the article and we look to see whether the ideas presented are suitable for an international journal or not. Uh, earlier, Steve showed you the slide on the types of manuscripts that the IFLA journal will consider. And there is slight variation depending on whether it's an original research article or it's a review article or a case study. Uh, each of these have got some differences in the way they are reviewed and what we look for. But in general, we are still looking for coverage, content, and ideas. Next slide, please. So at the macro level, what are we looking for? Well, first, we look to see whether the work falls within the scope of the journal. The IFLA journal carries a very wide variety of articles. So in many cases, it probably can be included, uh, but nevertheless, it's something that we want to see whether it sort of falls in there or not. We also look at the novelty and originality of the work. Is it something that has been discussed many times before? Is it something that is of current interest? Or is it something that you know perhaps would, would be of interest perhaps 10 years ago, but is no longer of current interest. Has the work been clearly formulated as a suitable approach taken? How, how has the work been done? How, what is the approach to it? Whether the methodology is appropriate and clearly described, ethical aspects, if there are any uh, findings and discussions, and importantly, what is the significance of the work? You know, to whom would it be useful? To whom would it be significant? Is it still significant today? Or was it something that, uh, you know, it has passed its time? So many aspects to look at. And of course, whether it can be understood or not, whether it is readable or not. Next slide, please. At the micro level, I mean, the earlier slide was on the macro level. At the micro level, we may even look at uh, the title, 
the abstract, whether it's clear enough, the keywords that are used to describe the article, the literature cited, the methodology, findings, and even looking at the references in there. And I'll describe some of these uh, in the next few slides that come on. Next slide, please. There are two, fact two key factors that uh, the IFLA journal wants us to focus on. One is whether the submission makes a significant contribution in terms of the knowledge and information conveyed. Uh, that submission that you make, uh, what is the contribution that it is especially making? And keep in mind that IFLA journal is an international journal so something that may be of interest in your particular locality may not be of interest to someone outside. It may also be something that is new knowledge to your locality, but is commonly already known and practiced elsewhere. So what is the contribution that uh, your manuscript is making to the journal? And secondly, whether the submission is sound in terms of methodology, findings, and structure. Uh, I'll point out a little bit some of the shortcomings in there, but uh, there are many times where the methodology and findings that are something, something is missing in there. And this is where uh, the comments would normally come in to say that you've not described this sufficiently enough or your findings do not uh, tell this story or something like on there. Next slide, please. So occasionally, and Steve will be able to give you more figures on it, uh, the manuscript may be recommended for rejection. So the reviewers look at it and say, oh, oh, this is not good enough for the AFLA journal. So uh, let's, we tell the editor, please consider rejecting the thing. The final decision is of course with the editor, but uh, the reviewers may recommend rejection. Now, just because an article is rejected, it does not necessarily mean that the work is of poor quality. It may be that it is out of scope of the journal. It may be something that, you know, the journal is looking for something and the article is out of scope with it. It may not meet the standards of originality. Uh, if a journal seeks original articles and if something has been, a part of it has already been published somewhere else, uh, then perhaps, you know, it's not quite the originality we are looking for in there. Or it may be that the scope is too localized, which may be suitable for a local or a regional journal, but not an international journal. So if you've done a study, say, for example, in a particular locality involving two or three universities, and you want to submit it to an international journal, well, how would that information that is done in two universities be appropriate for an international audience? That's something to consider. So perhaps it may not be suitable for an international journal, but would be very good for a local or a regional journal. So it could be, I mean, this is just one example of it in there. Next slide, please. Let me give you a sample of some of the shortcomings that uh, at least I have come across uh, over the two years that I've been reviewing articles in there. <clears throat> the title may not be reflective of the content. You know, the title is a uh, book saying something, but the content is uh, a little bit different in there or vice versa. The abstract may be too long-winded. It sort of gives a very long introduction, but what we are interested in seeing the the results of it, the significance of it is just dismissed in four or five words. Um, the emphasis of it is not, a, not uh, suitable. Keywords may not be appropriate. Um, information that's taken from other sources may not be appropriately cited. Authors normally have an introduction where they give a background to it, but information obviously is not coming from the head of the author. So where is that information taken from? we'd like to know. And this is where just a simple citation is needed for it in there. The rationale for the study or what we would call in research, the problem statement is not clear. 
uh, why was the study necessary? What, what made the study go on? Objectives may not be clear. Literature review may just be a narrative or is outdated. I've come across articles where the most recent literature that was cited is about six or seven years old. Hasn't there been anything new in that area in the last six years? Well, this is something that, uh, you know, when you submit something in 2021, we expect to see literature that is fairly recent, not something that is um, eight, 10 years old. Next slide, please. The methodology or the approach has taken to uh, conducting the study was not clear. And for the, where statistical analysis is carried out, sometimes uh, the requirements for those tests are not clear. In any statistical analysis that you do, especially at the higher levels, when you do hypothesis testing or you use the higher form of tests, there are certain assumptions that need to be met. Well, they may not have been made clear in that manuscript in there. Findings are not reflective of the objectives uh, in there. The significance is not clear, especially for an international audience. You may be writing from your country's perspective, but from someone in another country, why would I want to read that article? Well, that's something that needs to be made clear in there. Recommendations are sometimes not based on the findings. And this is something we, we do come across where they are more of personal views that the university should do this, or the country should do this, or the profession should have this. But what was the finding? That was not clear in there. So those things, uh, uh, recommendations and conclusions uh, need to be based on the work that was carried out. And references, as I pointed out earlier, may be outdated. Sometimes they are a number of years old. I'm not saying that all references cannot be used, but they need to be related to the study and to show that you, know, you have looked at some of the more recent works that have been carried out. <clears throat> Next slide, please. <clears throat> so basically our recommendations would be one of the four in there. Uh, one to accept with no changes, which in my own personal experience as an author and as, as a reviewer, which is quite rare. Uh, in many cases, it would require minor revisions to be made or major revisions and to be resubmitted for review. Occasionally, we may recommend that the manuscript be rejected. Next slide, please. So how, how would you deal with the reviewer's comments uh, when you get the, in most cases, when you get a request for revision, you will get a copy of the reviewer's comments too. Take an look, objective look at your work. Uh, the reviewers have looked at it and they've provided another opinion to it. It's very normal to say, you know, this is what I wanted to do. This is what I wanted to say. He didn't understand what I was trying to say. Well, look at it objectively and respond to all the points as thoroughly as you can. If you're uncertain about it, uh, ask for clarification. And sometimes there may be two or three reviewers where one reviewer says do this and another reviewer says do that. But if you're not clear about it, ask the editor for clarification. And if necessary, the editor will come back to us and say, you know, the author has uh, a problem with this. So uh, can you come to an understanding? And even if you disagree or you are unable to change what the reviewers request of you, that's all right. Explain why and respond with evidence. Reviewers are not experts in everything. They do not, they do not know every single situation. So sometimes something may be of particular to your locality or to your country, which the reviewer may not be familiar with. So it's for you to explain and say, in my country, this is the way it is done. And okay, we understand that. List all the responses, uh, try and respond on time and uh, submit a clean revised version of your manuscript so that uh, the reviewer can then look at it and say, yes, the change has been made or no, it's not been made. Uh, perhaps some other factor comes in in there. Next slide, please. 
So basically, my take home message uh, would be that most articles, almost every article would be going through the review process. The review process is not a barrier to publication. We are not your enemies. We are not uh, you know, to prevent you from seeking publication. But we are there as colleagues, we are there as friends to help you make your work better so that it can be published in a journal of quality. And we look forward to working with you to receiving your manuscripts so that uh, it can be published in the IFLA journal. So try and write and publish in there. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Singh. <clears throat> okay, finally, I would like to take a few minutes to uh, talk about author support and resources. Uh, my name is Li Hongzhu. I'm a professor and associate dean at School of Information Management, uh, Wuhan University. <clears throat> Firstly, I would like to say, um, writing an article can be a very challenging and lonely process. Uh, sometimes you just want someone to talk to, or you just want some advices from experienced people. Uh, we would like to, to, to assure you that we will be there for you. And we don't reject the people, uh, we, we don't reject the paper according to, um, uh, to their first draft, but, but first draft, but we want to see if there a potential to help you to revise your manuscript. Um, and and I, I want to remind you that we will be here to support you rather than a barriers to um, to criticize your work. So before you submit your manuscript, uh, you should check your manuscript against our checklist. Make sure you have clear indication about the type of your paper. Uh, are you using right referencing and citation styles? Uh, is your uh, your work within the word limit? Uh, how about your title and abstract and keywords? Are they um, in informative? Are they concise? Um, make sure you follow the convention of ac academic writing. I want to talk about, a bit more about that because as uh, English is um, my second language, writing in English can be very difficult for me. But sometimes you need to um, find external helps, for example, I usually use um, find a proofreader to help me to, to revise my manuscript. And it doesn't mean that your manuscript has to be like written perfectly. No, I, I, I didn't mean that. What I'm trying to say is that you should try to be um, straightforward. You should try to be uh, clear. Um, you don't have to be um, speak like native speakers do. Um, I think when you submit, you need to prepare a cover letter. A cover letter is a very important because that's a first opportunity for you to communicate with the editor and make a first impression and tell them why our research is good and why it's worth considering. Um, before you submitting, you need to take care of copyright and the ethics issues. Um, you have to obtain permissions from all copyrighted materials. You, you make sure you have the correct authorship and acknowledgement, uh, state all the funding support, uh, state if you have conflict of interests. If you perceive that you may have plagiarism problems, deal with that before submit, just do not do plagiarism. And if you want more guidelines about um, privacy and um, ethics issue, and, and the research integrity issue, you can use the COPE guideline at this link. Uh, these are several um, materials I personally think very useful. It helps you to you know, structure your work and think about how your work can be published, can be published and, um, and, and how, what kind of support you can get. Um, this includes, for example, uh, Steve's article about balancing between the global and local, and as well as the research methodology, and uh, they'll just, just have mentioned um, a, a strong research methodology is really important. Okay, if your manuscript is accepted, and I think many of your manuscript will be accepted, 
uh, we will send your article to uh, several major abstracting and indexing services, such as Web of Science. Um, our journal is in indexed by ESCI, so it's very highly ranked. And we are also uh, uh, abstracted by Scopus and um, EI. I know in many countries, for example, the country of mine in China, uh, indexing is very important, very, very important. But I, I just want to share with you, um, indexing is really overrated. What you really want to find out is um, whether your research and article can make a real impact, whether your article and research can be used by people somewhere in the world. I think that's the achievement we should look for. And your paper will be made available uh, at Sage Journal's platform. And I want to remind you that we are open access journal. So um, once you are published, um, everyone can search and use, download your article. We will um, provide you alerts, usage and citation uh, numbers and trackings. And also you can use, use your own uh, social network um, academic social network, for, for example, Kudos. And I personally use ResearchGate, which is very good because you, you build your own research community. You talk to people uh, in your own field and share your articles and discuss questions. And also you can promote your work. And there are some other ways to promote your work. Uh, for example, link your article in your email signature. I'm doing that and email a link to um, interested in the colleagues or peers. Use your uh, social media account. For example, if you're in China, you can certainly do um, WeChat. Uh, if you notice, uh, both me and uh, Professor Xiaolong uh, have promoted this session using WeChat, which is a very powerful channel. Uh, if you're outside of China, you can use Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and you can then build a Baidu Scholar profile or Google Plus account, um, both of which can help you to promote your in influence. And also share at the conferences with fellow researchers. Go to conferences is a very important practice. You can um, talk to people face to face and talk about your research as well as your questions or problems. Okay, this will be our talk today. And these are the questions, and these are the um, useful context. Um, and I want to say it again, we are not here to judge everyone's work. We really want to provide support. So if you have any question, you can, and Steve, uh, you, you can send an email to Steve, Shali, or, or, or Long, or Dojet, or me, or me. We will help you to prepare your work. We will help you to, you know, to, 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 to start your publication process. And thank you very much. And, uh, and if, if you have any questions, please um, uh, send it at the chat window. Okay, let, let's move on to the Q&A session. Um, we do have several questions which are very, very interesting. Um, um, from Mohammed Majid Mashrufa, um, he asked if we want to publish our paper through IFLA journals open access option? If so, is there any article processing fees? Uh, Steve, can you talk about it? Sure. Uh, thanks for your question. That's a, that's a good one. Um, uh, as I mentioned before, IFLA journal is a, a hybrid journal. Uh, so you have two routes uh, you can take. Um, uh, if you want the journal to be open access, uh, through the Sage interface, uh, then there is uh, a publishing fee uh, for that, uh, and many people, institutions will pay for that, um, uh, especially uh, increasingly so from European universities. Um, but uh, you can also make your your paper open access without the fee. Um, IFLA publishes the journal on their website, so it's available open access there, uh, and you can also post the accepted version of your manuscript on your, your personal site, as, as, uh, as Li Hong mentioned, um, uh, on uh, a site like ResearchGate uh, or your, your institution's repository. I hope, hopefully that answers your question. If you, if you have further questions about that, I can answer that in email or, or put you in contact with our publisher. 
Thank you, Steve. And there is another one from Nayana uh, Wija, Wijaya Sandadra. Um, so, sorry if I pronounce your name poorly. Uh, um, so um, the question is, we came across, we come across acceptance rate in many journals. Can we make any judgment on journal quality by looking at accept, acceptance rate? Steve? Um, I think you can make some uh, to, to a certain degree. If, if a journal has a 100% acceptance rate, um, we can assume it's not very selective in its editorial process and probably is not of high quality. Uh, most academic journals um, that are, are rigorous in their review process only accept uh, between 30 and 40 percent of the manuscripts that are that are uh, submitted. Uh, some have lower acceptance rates. Um, uh, those are, are typically journals that that have a, a lot of prestige associated with them, uh, and thus a lot of competition for, for, for publishing. Okay. Um, there is another one. Uh, may I put the final version of my manuscript to EFLA journal into my institutional repository? I guess I'll, I'll answer that one. Awesome. Um, uh, so you can you can submit uh, the accepted version of the the article in your repository. the The version that has the Sage imprint uh, uh, cannot be put in your repository per the Sage uh, copyright agreements. Uh, so you, you may do it with the, the version uh, that was accepted for publication. Um, uh, and then you can also uh, link to the, the version on IFLA journal as well, site, the IFLA site as well. Okay, thank you, Steve. Um, do we have more questions? I think there's a question about revisions. Uh, okay. Uh, the, uh, what kind of paper uh, is considered for minor revision and what is uh, for major revision from Anita Nataranjan? Uh, so perhaps one of the reviewers can, can discuss how, how they make that assessment. Thank you. Uh, Sorry, Professor Vion, do you want me to answer that? Uh, yes, please. Okay. I think uh, <clears throat> the level of revision that's required, uh, there are a number of factors that we will look at it. One is in terms of, uh, you know, how long would it take to make those changes in there? Is it something that can be done in one or two days? Or is it something that would require perhaps going back to the library or to the databases and finding more information or going back to your research and adding some information to it in there. Uh, it would also depend on to what extent uh, or what depth the changes that need to be made. Is it something that uh, perhaps you need to look at your data again uh, or the analysis of it again or perhaps if there's some statistical test that you did was not appropriate for it, uh, that you may have to uh, do some other testing of it in there, which may affect your findings and your recommendations and conclusions. So that would be some of the things that uh, we would look for in us recommending whether it is a minor revision to be made or something that's major that would take time to do it in there. Perhaps uh, the others may have something that they want to add. Okay, um, Dojit, um, actually there is another question from Nayana. She, um, um, he or she raised a very interesting question. Readability of the work, does it mean the language used in the article? How do you copyright, uh, copy edit articles in your journal? 
<clears throat> I think in terms of the language, now the language, uh, as long as we can understand the thing, um, we are fine with it in there, at least at the review stage. Um, when it goes back to Steve and his team, yes, they look at it more deeply, more, more refinely into the language part of it in there. Uh, <clears throat> I come from an Asian country. I've been dealing with international students for many, many years. So I'm used to where the language is not perfect. So even if your English is not perfect, as long as I can understand the thing, that's fine. Uh, so we don't look so deeply into the, the, the readability, the language aspect of readability, uh, whether the sentence structure is clear or not. As long as we can understand the gist of it, that's fine. But when it goes to the copy editing stage, I think this is where they look at it more clearly. And Steve has a team of people helping him to do that. Uh, which would then bring your article up to the level where it can be published in a journal like IFLA. Okay, thank you, Jit. Um, actually, Nan Nancy Do and Deborah sent me a personal uh, message and question about um, find navigating around. Um, um, ifla.org about finding out where um, about journals information well, um, my recommendation for you nancy is you can search it in google just ifla journal and you will find all the information about this journal the current issue submission guidelines and um, um, editorial committee information um, at sage website i think sage website is um, it is easier to access. Um, uh, and we also have a, a, a Twitter account that we use to, oh. to submit uh, announcements for special issues um, and, and calls for papers. Um, in addition, we, we will send those out to the IFLA listserv as well. Uh, so so those, those are our good routes uh, to, to staying in contact. And, it seems we also need to use uh, WeChat uh, as well. Okay, um, is there any more question? Um, okay, um, Nancy actually asked, will it be okay to add me to your mailing list to get notified? Of course you can, um, uh, Nancy, if you can send me um, your email ad ad address, I'll, I'll send you the information um, after this session. Um, everyone, if, if you have more questions, please um, send it to the chat window, uh, or maybe if, if you have a question later, you can always email us. Um, I, I, I just want to make sure that um, we we will provide sufficient support to all of you and we treat our manuscript very seriously and carefully we don't reject paper just as it is we judge paper as how they can be and what kind of a what kind of quality the paper will achieve after a revision um, and thank you very much oh there is Okay, uh, Suresh also asked um, a mailing list. Uh, okay, um, I'll do that. I'll, I'll make sure um, I'll, I'll, send in, I'll, I'll send you the information. Um, and Steve or Charlie, do you have some final um, uh, words to say to our audience? No, not myself. Go ahead, do whatever you need. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you, Shali. And Shali is our um, chair and the manager of the journal. And she, she worked very closely with Steve. And, and um, finally, I, I want to mention that uh, this video and our slides will be made at the IFLA website. Uh, will be made at IFLA web website uh, for about 30 days. Uh, so, um, so on the IFLA website, uh, if you can lo look at the IFLA journal, um, 
um, uh, tab, and that will be um, this video. So uh, thank you very much. Um, I wish you have a very good day or good night for Steve or Shelley. Thank you very much for your participation. Um, um, bye. Yep. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Uh, please send me emails if we have other questions. Thank you.